Hello, in this video, I will be using DesignSpark PCB, which is a free PCB design software available online. So let's explore its various features. As you can see, there are multiple tabs available on the top part of the screen. The first tab, that is the file tab, is used to open new files and save existing files which you are editing. Then this here is the library manager tab. Upon clicking this tab, we find there are multiple sub tabs available. We have the schematic symbol tab, the PCB symbol tab and the components tab. The schematic tab stores all the schematic diagrams from different devices available to us. The PCB symbol tab stores the PCB footprint of various devices that are available. While this component tab combines the schematic symbol and the PCB footprint details such that that component can be used in our PCB design process. DesignSpark PCB software library has numerous components already available for our use but the user is free to define a component as per his requirement. Now I shall create a component starting from its schematic symbol then its PCB symbol and lastly the component which combines both of these two. Thereafter I shall be using that component while designing a PCB. First, I would select a new device for which I shall create its schematic and its PCB footprint. Here, I have selected a power MOSFET with manufacturer part number IRF540N PBF. Now, to create its schematic symbol, I will click this schematic symbol tab. Thereafter, to save the newly created schematic symbol, I would create a schematic library. For that, first I would click this new library tab and give a name of my choice to save it. Hereafter, any schematic symbol created will be saved in this new library schematic folder. Now, we will click this new item tab. Thereafter, we would go to this settings tab and select this units option. Here we would set the unit to mm and the precision as per our choice. Once that is done, now we shall use these various shape options to create our schematic symbol.
once that is done we would be adding pads to the different terminals of this schematic symbol the pads helps the software to identify the various terminals of this device the pad can be selected from this tab now we have added pads to the gate drain and source terminal of this device once that is done we would be saving the schematic by clicking this save bu save button a prompt bar would appear on the screen asking us to name this symbol so we have named this schematic symbol as per the manufacturer part number and this schematic symbol will be saved in this new library schematic folder now i would be creating the pcb footprint symbol for this device to design the pcb footprint symbol i shall select this library manager tab now under this pcb symbol tab i will be creating a new library folder to store the newly created pcb footprints all the new library footprints that will be created will be stored in this folder once that is done i will be selecting this new item tab and thereafter going to this setting section here i will set the units to mm as i have done for the schematic part we can see that the unit selected is displayed at the bottom rightmost corner now here we can see on the top left part there are various type of pads that are available to make our pcb footprint this here is a through hole pad and this here is a smd pad as the device selected by me is a through hole device i shall be selecting this through hole pad we can zoom in on the screen using our mouse scroll button now the dimensions of the pad is to be very carefully carefully selected based on the device data sheet as these pads will be manufactured on our final pcb hardware any mismatch in the dimensions of the device with the pad selected shall make the pcb unusable another important feature to notice is that the units that i have set for in our pcb footprint that is these units should be same with the units that we use in our data sheet so now in our data sheet we can see that the various dimensions of our device is provided both in millimeters as well as in inches so as we have set our units 
in design spark software to be mm so we shall consider the millimeters data that is provided here here we can see that the mosfet legs have a maximum width of 1.4 mm and a minimum width of 1.15 mm also the distance between two legs is 2.54 mm using this data now we shall be creating a pcb footprint for this device i shall now right click on this footprint and select the properties option here the whole size is selected as we got from our data sheet this here will provide the width of the footprint it is possible to measure these using this scale option that is available we see the inner width is uh, 1.4 mm as we have set and the outer width is 2 mm as set by us now we select this footprint and set this as the system origin there after using shortcut keys of control c and control v we can paste two more footprints which are of similar size now we want these footprints to be at a distance of 2.54 mm from each other therefore we will select the second pad right click on it and then go to the property section here this is the position of the x coordinate and this is the position of the y coordinate of this pad here we shall write the x position to be 2.54 mm similarly for this pad the x coordinate will be 5.08 mm now these three are the pads that will be used for manufacturing the pcb footprint of our mosfet we can check the dimensions using this measure option we can see that the distance between these two pads is 5.08 mm and between these two pads is 2.54 mm now once this is done we shall save it clicking this save button a pop up will now ask us to give a input for the pcb footprint name now we can see that under this pcb symbol and this library new library pcb footprint that we have created we now have a pcb footprint for the mosfet that we have designed just now 
And under the schematic symbol, we have the schematic diagram of the MOSFET. Now using these two, we shall be creating a component for the power MOSFET that we have used. Now for creating a component, I shall go to this tab Now, all the new components created shall be saved under this library. Thereafter, I shall go to this new item tab and all the details of our selected component will be entered here. The schematic symbol that we have created just now will be selected and the PCB footprint that we created will be selected. Once this is done, we shall now be binding the different pads that we have assigned to our schematic with the PCB footprint pads. So here we can see the pin number 1 as per our data sheet is the gate pin, pin number 2 is the drain pin and pin number 3 is the source pin. So accordingly this pin should be our gate pin. Now we select this particular pad upon selecting it the corresponding row gets highlighted here we will insert the pad number for our PCB footprint so we have now selected this pad to be the gate pad. The second pad, second number pin is the drain pin. So the middle pin should correspond to the drain pin. So here after selecting this particular pad This highlighted row here we enter the PCB footprint number 2 and lastly we enter the PCB footprint 3 which is corresponding to the source pin. Therefore we can check whether we have correctly connected the pins by clicking on these pads one by one. Now I shall be saving this component by clicking this save button. The pop up here will ask me to give a component name. Here I have selected this to be my component name. This component will be saved under this library folder. So now under this component section, I can see that there is a new device that has been created. This device is basically created using the schematic symbol that we designed earlier and the PCB footprint symbol that we designed. Now we shall be using this component in our PCB designs. Now. I shall close all of these tabs 
using this close button and then start a new project. Under this project section, the various schematic designs and the PCB designs of a particular project can be stored. Now I will create a new project and thereafter go ahead to design a schematic and its corresponding PCB. After selecting this project tab, I will click this OK button. Thereafter, I will name a project of my choice. Now, under this new project file, we can store various schematic designs and PCB designs as well as other files related to this project. I will now start making a sample semantic clicking this new button. I would go to the schematic design tab and then click OK. Here I have been prompted to enter a name of my choice for my schematic design. So this here is the first schematic file that has been created under our project. It can be viewed here that under this project file, this new schematic has been created. Now we can see there are various tabs available on the top and as well as the left part of the screen. These will be used by us to create the schematic completely. This first tab here that is the add component tab is used to add various schematic symbols that we have created or are pre-existing in our library while creating the schematic. While this tab is used to connect the various points or various connection points between the components that we will be placing in the schematic. Let's use them one by one. We select the add component. and select the MOSFET that we have created. I will now select a pre-existing A4 template that is already available in our library. Thereafter, I will select a few other components to make a very simple circuit.
now I will double click on these components and this select the information that I do not want to display. This makes the schematic diagram look less cluttered. I have used the shortcut button R to rotate the component and orient it as per my need. Now I will select this add schematic connection button to connect the various schematic symbols that I have placed on the screen. This here, the schematic of a very simple bug converter circuit. Here, as I have made this circuit only as a trial project, I have not included the snubbers. Now, I will go ahead and save this schematic. Under the schematic sections, we have various tabs that are available on the top. One of the important tab is this output tab. Under this output tab, we can generate various reports. Some of the reports that we can see here are bill of materials. The bill of materials provides an easy list of components used in the schematic, which helps us to quickly order the components directly. Then the second one here is the dangling connections tab. It helps us in quickly finding any possible mistakes made in the schematic. Also, this unconnected pins tab reports any of the pins of a component that are not connected and are left dangling. These helps us to find out any possible errors while designing a schematic. Also, the whole netlist can be generated uh, using this reports tab. 
The netlist is basically a description of the connectivity of all electronic components. It actually consists of a list of electronic components in a circuit and list of nodes they are connected to. Now we can see the connection between this banana jack and this MOSFET is given as node net name N0016 that is visible on the screen. Similarly, various other connections have been given different net names and net classes. To connect any two nets between any two schematic symbols that we might have in this project, we can rename this net and type the net name of our choice in its place. This will basically connect the two nets and therefore connect the two points of the circuit. Now we shall be using this schematic and thereafter generate the PCB for the same. Now before creating the PCB let us try the various reports that can be generated. First, I will generate the bill of materials. Upon clicking the bill of materials tab, an excel sheet is generated which provides all the components that I have used in this schematic as well as their quantity. This will help me in ordering the components as and when I require them. Thereafter, Let us run this unconnected pins tab. As there are no pins unconnected in this schematic, the reports that is generated shows the same. Thereafter, let me check the dangling connections tab. I will on purpose leave one connection dangling here. In our case, this banana connector is left dangling on purpose. Now, under the report section, I will run the dangling's connection tab. Here, I can see that this net N0026, which is connected to this connector 4, is left dangling. So, you can see that the net that we have mentioned just now is shown here and the report has identified it to be dangling. So any dangling connection which we might have left by mistake can be found out using this dangling connections tab. Finally, I will generate the report for netlist. This netlist basically gives us all the components that have been available in our schematic and the nets that are connecting them. This helps the software to understand the circuit connections. Once we have done this, now I will be generating the PCB. For that, I will go to the tool section and then select this translate to PCB option. Now, I will go to this next button, select the units as per my requirement. In my case, I am selecting a two layer board. I can select multiple layer boards as per my requirement. Then I will select the next button and the board size that is defined by default are of these dimensions. Now, I have finally got this PCB outline and the PCB footprints of various components that I have selected. These PCB footprints are 
the pre-existing PCB footprints from our library while this PCB footprint is the PCB footprint of the MOSFET that we have created. Also the interconnections between the components are as per the schematic interconnections that we have made. Now we will arrange these PCB footprints as per the orientations that we desire in our final PCB. We can select it using mouse button and drag in into our PCB outline area. Then using the rotate shortcut button R we can rotate it as per our need. The PCB outline area can be reduced as per our requirement by left clicking on it and dragging it as per requirement. Now to start laying tracks we can double click on this yellow lines and then start clicking to start laying copper. Now to avoid 90 degree breadths on this copper tracks we will select this edges to give a softer bend to this copper tracks. While hovering the mouse over this copper track we can see that the net class, the layer and the net number is shown. In our case this copper track is on the top copper. Now if we go to the top part of this screen there are various uh, options available to us. This measure option provides a scale to measure the physical distance between various components on the PCB board. And this design calculator helps us to decide the track width that we require. Based on the intended current that we intend to flow in this circuit, the track width can be selected by using this design calculator. Also it helps us in selecting the heat sink, tells us about the wire resistances and various other factors that might be needed while designing the PCB. Apart from that, under the settings section, we can go to this design technology tab. Here we can predefine various factors like the various nets, net classes, spacings between various components like tracks, pads, wire, shapes, text, minimum spacings that are allowed, any other rules that we intend to follow, various layers that we have, the colors for the various layers and pad styles. This design technology file helps us while doing design rule checks at the end of this PCB design. Now we can also right click on these tracks, go to properties and change the track width as per our need. 
here we have selected a thicker track width of 2.5 mm. Further, we can change the layer of copper that we are using by clicking the shortcut key L. Here we can see that the old layer was the top copper and the new layer selected is the bottom copper. Again, we have changed this copper and selected the bottom copper. The difference in copper layer is also evident by the different colors that have been used for showing the copper tracks. Also, to interconnect various layers of copper, wires may be used. Now, once the copper laying is done, we will do the design checks. Now, under this design rule check, we can check the various manufacturing, spacing, and net constraints that we have placed in our design technology file. Here upon checking we find that this particular PCB has no errors. So it is ready to be sent to manufacturing companies to manufacture our PCB. For that under the output section we will go to manufacturing plots and generate its Gerber plot. This plot is then sent to PCB manufacturers for getting our PCB prepared. I hope this video was helpful for you in learning in design of a PCB from scratch. Thank you.